everybody, welcome back to Scuba Diving Magazine. I'm back answering your scuba diving questions every single week. Um, so this is Ask Mark, which is a scuba diving Q&A if you're new to the channel. Uh, if you have any scuba diving questions, by all means, pop them down in the comments below and use the Ask Mark hashtag, and that will get them featured in an upcoming Q&A. This week, I'm answering questions about purge valve pressurizing your regulators, surface swimming, proper BCD and boat procedure, free diving after scuba diving, and the Avatar 101 dry suit. The first question comes from Stormblessed, who sounds like they're a Game of Thrones character, awesome name. Um, but they say, I have three basic questions, heard different opinions about these. Uh, I'll start off with number one. Number one, do we need to keep the purge valve pressed when opening the tank valve? I was not taught this, nor had I ever seen this before, till I saw some people do it on a boat. When asked, they said that they were taught this to protect the regulators. This is pretty new and it's, it's becoming one of those more and more prevalent procedures. I was never taught to do this. I, um, I never taught students to do this. And it's only, I think I first saw it maybe about two years ago, where when you're pressurizing your regulators, you hook up the regulator onto your cylinder. And then before you open the valve, you get one of the second stages and you hold down the purge button. What this is really to do is to protect your regulators from some kind of pressure shock. So if you crack that valve and all of a sudden there's this rush of pressure, that can be a bit much. It can slip O-rings and whatnot. So it's actually better if you hold down the purge button, slowly, slowly creep that valve open, and then you get that trickle of gas, you hear a hiss, and then when you hear the regulator pressurize, it makes that kind of noise then you can, or, or sorry, when you're actually pressurizing or um, holding down the purge button, it's gonna hiss, obviously. When you hear the hissing, then you let go of the purge button, then it makes that pressurizing kind of noise, and then you're good. It, it's just to help protect the regulator from just a sudden rush, because on a lot of first stage designs, especially if you think of like a, a Scuba Pro Mark 25, the um, that fifth port has a very very clean uh, like airflow. So if you just whack that valve open, there's this sudden rush of uh, of gas, and that goes straight into that uh, that main hose. So that can then sort of hit your second stage at such a surprising force, it can damage or uh, or kind of like push some of the O rings and the seals. So it's actually better to give it somewhere to escape if you're holding down the purge button, and then. Once it's too like it's kind of used to that pressure, you let go of the purge button and then it pressurizes. So it kind of is the done thing now. It's uh, it's taught in a lot of places nowadays, um, but I wouldn't be surprised and, and don't be disappointed in your instructor if they didn't or don't teach you it. It's relatively new, um, but yeah, it's kind of the done thing now, unless you have like a pneumatic uh, second stage, something like a, um, uh, Poseidon Extreme, or the um, they they tend to be the the side exhaust ones. So the uh, the Omega Three from Oceanic and the I forget what they call it the the Hollis version. Um, if you hold down the purge button, it, it will just continue. You need to get that little bit of a hiss. But anyway, yeah, it's kind of the done thing now, and yeah, it's it's perfectly fine. But as as, as long as you open that valve slowly, anyway, uh, you should be okay. Their second question was, while swimming on the surface against a current and in full gear, is it better to be on your back or to have your face in the water? Kind of depends what you want to do. If you if you just need to get somewhere, I'm typically on my back uh, because it is just the most convenient. Uh, your, your face is out of the water. You can hear as well any boat traffic. Your legs tend to be down in the water, so a frog kick just gives you the, the maximum efficiency. And if you're, if you're somewhere particularly beautiful, you're swimming over a reef to get to your exit point or whatever, then yeah, by all means, face down in the water. That's why some scuba divers dive with snorkels. It's, um, it's so that you can have your face in the water looking at what's underneath you whilst you're on the surface. Um, for like 
I think I covered this a, a week or two ago for like maximum raw power. If someone's in trouble and I need to get to them, a lot of the time I'll actually turn on my side and, um, and that way both of my legs stay under the water. So I get maximum efficiency through the water. Um, but for most like surface transitions, if I'm heading from an entry point to a, a, a dive spot, then yeah, I'm typically on my back and occasionally I'll like roll over just to have a quick peek at making sure I'm not going off of course, but yeah, it's normally on my back. And their third question is for a boat entry, I was taught to inflate the BCD in the water. I never thought to question this during the course, but in some boats I was told to inflate first and then get in, which is better? Does it depend on entry type, i.e. stride or back roll? Um, I always used to teach students to inflate their BCD first because it's all kind of in in my mind it's in the unlikely event so there have been cases of and you'll probably notice it yourself when you're on a, a dive boat you're fully kitted up you've got your fins on and even if you're like doing a giant stride entry uh, off the back of the boat or you're transitioning from a larger boat like a liver boat into a rib but you've already got your bcd your cylinder your weights and whatnot on even if you're not carrying your fins it's still an awkward procedure and it's not unusual for some divers to slip and if you slip if you bang your head then you're going to be in trouble and the worst case scenario is if you slip you bang your head and then you fall into the water now if you fall into the water and you're unconscious i'd far rather have my bcd inflated so that someone could get me from the surface instead of me sinking down to the depths unconscious so in my mind as soon as it's on, put some gas in your BCD. That way, should you fall in, at least you're gonna float. Another story that always springs to mind is, I wasn't there, but it was one of those stories that goes around the club that when they were on a, uh, a trip, they were doing a, um, a rollback entry, a negative rollback entry, um, because we tend to do this if there's a lot of current. So if you, if you roll back, into the surface the current is going to just pull you over the reef or at least away from your dive site so you want to roll in and get down below this certain level it's usually when the um, there's like a pinnacle reef or something that's just below the surface so you get some water currents that push pulls over the top uh, but once you get below the like top of the pinnacle then it tends to calm down a little bit so you have no gas in your BCD and it's just a matter of just roll in and just go for it. However, this diver had forgotten to turn their gas on. So they did this negative entry. So they're sinking and they can't breathe. So there's that sudden mad rush of, oh, I actually need to uh, test my shoulder rotation. But I'd far rather have some gas in my BCD um, ready should I slip full bang my head and end up in the water it is just far safer I get that they they might be pressed for space so you don't want everyone with like inflated jacket style BCDs or something so um, oh yeah I mean play it by ear but I'd always have a little bit of gas in my uh, in my BCD just so that if I do fall in at least I'm gonna float Laborde asks, if after a dive I realise I can't make the second dive because I'm feeling cold, I'm feeling weak, back pain, etc., can I still join my friends by free diving above them? Um, no. I mean, if I was like feeling cold or weak or just feeling anything off after a dive, I'd stay out of the water anyway, tell uh, the guides and whatnot, j just so that they can monitor my signs and symptoms because it could be uh, an early sign of some kind of decompression illness or something. Um, but I certainly wouldn't get back into the water um, because that's just dangerous. Um, if you're feeling perfectly fine, and you, you've been for a scuba dive, you've come out, and now you want to go back into the water for some free diving, uh, again, that's a bit of a no-no. So the current guideline is after a single dive, you can't go, for, or you shouldn't go free diving for 12 hours. And if it's multiple dives, I think it's 18 hours. Uh, I'm sure someone will fact check me um, down in the comments below if, if those um, uh, timings are different, but it's all to do with like residual nitrogen and gases inside of your tissues after that scuba dive. Because 
even after you come up, you still have gas in your tissues. That's why we work out our surface interval because you're still off gassing when you're on the surface, when you're on the boat, you still have dissolved tissues, uh, dissolved gases in your tissues. If you then go free diving, you then rapidly increase the ambient pressure around you and then just as rapidly alleviate that pressure so there's chances that some of those dissolved gases can come out of solution too quickly where they shouldn't be and you can end up with some kind of decompression illness so no um, if you're not feeling well skip the next dive um, and definitely tell someone uh, that hey, you know what i'm not feeling so good can you just keep an eye on me? Um, don't like disappear to your uh, your quarters if it's like a liverboard or something. Try not to hide away just in case those signs and symptoms uh, do end up becoming something a bit more serious. Um, and yeah, don't get back in the water either on scuba or free diving um, because it's, it's really not worth it. Um, it can be quite dangerous. But even if you are feeling perfectly well and good, if you have been scuba diving, then give it a break before you do any kind of serious free diving. Snorkeling, okay. Um, you can be on the surface uh, as long as you feel okay. But diving, uh, diving, diving down mm, no I'd, I'd avoid that it's uh, it's best to avoid that for around like half a day to a day and christian s says hi mark i'm looking for my first dry suit and i'm very interested in the avatar 101 which you recommend that one for diving in europe germany uh how is the quality or do you think there are better alternatives in this price range out there thanks for answering and safe diving yes indeed um no avatar is a lovely suit they I forget the exact link between them and Santi, um, but it's it's very much a Santi dry suit, just under a, a different name as such. I, I can't remember if they're like officially officially connected or whether it's like an offshoot or, or whatever it is. But you definitely get the air of a Santi dry suit when you uh, when you get it out of the bag. Lovely build quality, very well put together, and you get like everything that you need to uh, to go dry suit diving and the suit itself yeah nice and light but still feels quite strong as well so you, it doesn't feel like paper and you're just going to rip it if you brush up against something but yeah a nice membrane dry suit decent cut in it so it's quite easy to get in and out of it all by yourself because it's front entry only comes with latex seals uh, which isn't the end of the world a lot of divers are going back to latex um, but you do have I think you do have the uh, the Santi, do they call it Smart Seals, which is like a soft rubber um, uh, uh, cuff system. So um, I can't remember if I have a set. Um, instead of having a rigid plastic, uh, this is the older version. Uh, so yeah, instead of having a rigid plastic ring system, it's more... Uh, it's more like soft and squidgy. So that just makes your life a bit easier because on one of my dry suits, the um, the cuff seal, it's just a little bit too close to my hand. I should really take like a, a half inch off of it, but at times it can like push against my thumb during a dive, so that can be quite annoying. But with a softer, like rubbery material, it's um, it, it's more malleable, so um, so you can swap it over. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I love the uh, the Avatar, and it sits in that sensible price range. Um, normally, for that kind of quality, you could expect a, a bigger price tag on it. But um, yeah, no, I, I do like them, and um, and they've got a good like heritage background, as it were, as if it's coming from Santee. So um, yeah, yeah, I can I can highly endorse Avatar. And that's it for this week. Uh, it was a little bit shorter this week because we had that like three-parter at the uh, at the beginning, but hopefully I answered all of your questions. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions, comments, queries, or corrections, uh, by all means, pop them down in the comments section below. Uh, if you do have any questions about scuba diving and you want to get featured in an upcoming show, use the Ask Mark hashtag and that'll get featured. It will probably be about two or three weeks now, uh, but I'll do my best to actually respond to your comments as, as soon as I, uh, as, as I see them so you do get an answer. Um, but you have to wait a little bit until you get the, the full-on like, video answer. Um, remember to head over to scubadivermag.com, our website, and podcast.scubadivermag.com as well, because I do a weekly podcast where I cover the latest 
just news and events, things that have piqued my interest, um, like interesting things that I've seen uh, like on the internet and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, if you just want me talking in your ear for a, a good like half hour, uh, yeah, go to podcast.scubadiveratmag.com. But that's it for another week. Uh, yeah, pop any questions you have down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving. <laughs>